Today on my bench, I've got the Orga Viewer. This thing looks like a little Chromecast, but it works in reverse. You plug this into your HDMI output on your computer, and you can monitor it from your phone, your laptop, that kind of stuff. It's also a KVM, so it emulates keyboard and mouse. If that sounds like something you like, then come along on this adventure. We've got the Orga Viewer here. Let's see what's in the box. Let's see, you got a set of cables in bubble wrap. We'll take a look at that in a bit. And the guy itself. This is not that heavy, so it looks like a little HDMI stick or something. Come on. Okay, so I have instructions. Just throw those out. Type A to Type C cable. It is purple, but it doesn't have any of the USB 3 pins. So this is just USB 2. It's lighter than like a Chromecast, if you remember those. So back we have the website, FCC information, FCC ID, and that's pretty much it. Type C, HDMI. Just a quick side note, I typed that FCC ID into the FCC ID database, and this is kind of what it looks like. So you can see it's uh, the Orga Viewer, it operates on these three frequencies, so that's the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi band. This is called the Uni 1 bands, so that's the lower part of the 5 GHz, and this is the upper part. And so it doesn't do the middle part. So down here, here's everything I had to submit to get FCC approval. So here's what they submitted to the FCC, we can kind of look in and see what they got. So it looks like they have an all-winner S3 inside, which is not a weak chip, and then I'm guessing this is some sort of certified Wi-Fi module. AP2656. Okay, 802.11 AC ABGN Wi-Fi combo module. Um, so it's an SDIO Wi-Fi card, so that is not uncommon at all. All Winter S3 should be capable of running Linux. It probably is running Linux, almost certainly. So I guess we could try to extract the firmware if we cared. There's a little bit of the uh, system on module, so it's got a Broadcom Wi-Fi card. Also in the goodie bag, this is just adapters. I believe the cables are all optional. So the unit itself in the box comes with the unit and the Type-C cable. The HDMI kit is an optional accessory. So now that we got this guy unboxed, let's take a look at how it works. So for my victim today, I have my Kali Linux box. Since this thing does keyboard video mouse, we use the included Type-C cable. This is gonna emulate our keyboard and mouse. This will do video, and this should also power the device. So I just gotta get HDMI and USB. So now I'm gonna wait for this thing to boot up. Now it does connect over Wi-Fi, so I'm gonna to have to disconnect my laptop from Wi-Fi to connect it to this thing. There is a way to connect it to your network as well, so I'm gonna do both of those things. So you download the app from the App Store, by the way. Even on Mac OS, it's in the Apple App Store, so they don't have a DMG file. On Windows and Linux, they do have a download. And on Android and iOS, it's in the App Store or the Play Store. So I come here and choose Orga Network. Let's see if it finds it. There we go. So now I'm connected. This is what Minilab should look like, so I'm on my Kali box. But I don't appear to have a mouse working. So a change of plans. It looks like the mobile app has more features than the desktop app. So I'm going to try the mobile app first. So here I am. I was connected. Um, if I hear the device, I am connected to it. Okay. Got some permissions. I also did notice on the um, Mac app that it eventually asked me for keyboard permissions. That's probably why the keyboard didn't work, because it hadn't asked for that permission yet. So connected locally to Wi-Fi. So now I can switch over to... Yeah, you're going to connect? Okay, so I told it my Wi-Fi password. So hopefully it remembers that. I connected you to a router. Those are the same network. What are you doing? Okay, so I could set a device security mode. Um, Wi-Fi region probably should be United States. Okay, so here is me looking at my Cali box. Probably not going to be terribly exciting for you, but oh, I lost it. I had it there. Okay, so I can use my finger to move the mouse. Then I got to remember my password, so then I double tap to bring out a keyboard. There we go. So 
I mean, it's working on my phone. Honestly, on the phone, this is not a bad experience. On the laptop, it was not working well, but on here, it's, um, it's definitely a bit weird using a relative motion on a touchscreen because my phone is a touchscreen. I sort of been expecting to be able to click buttons on the tiny little Kali screen. So I guess it is doing as promised on my phone, at least. I can see my screen, I can type. There doesn't appear to be anything else that can do over USB. So it has the option to switch between USB 1.1 and USB 2. And USB 2 motor emulates multi-touch for Windows, it says. And it says it's only for Windows, so I didn't try it on Linux, but um, yeah, it's pretty bare bones. So no sort of USB disk emulation. So if we three finger tap, we get the menu. So I'm going to go out of this mode. And let's see if I can get it to connect to my Wi-Fi. So in theory, I should be able to have this thing automatically connect to my Wi-Fi with my Wi-Fi password. Then it will show up as a device on the network and I can connect to it from their desktop app or their mobile app without having to disconnect from my Wi-Fi. So for some reason, it didn't end up on my network. I'm not sure why. It didn't get an IP and I don't know why it's not connecting to my network. So maybe it doesn't like that I have security or something. I don't know. There's also no settings menu at all on the desktop app. The desktop app can update the firmware, but at least on Mac OS, they didn't want to. The instructions say that's Windows only for the desktop app. On the mobile app, it said my firmware is already the latest version, so that's good, I guess. And on the mobile app, I had the option of setting it up to my Wi-Fi network, which again, didn't work. So, not the best performance so far. So for one last trick, I hooked this guy up with a USB Type-C cable to my laptop. It is supposed to be able to stream video that way. And it showed up in the Orga app on Mac OS and it didn't connect. It just kind of got stuck there. So maybe that's a Windows only feature. I don't know, testing on my Mac and it's not working. So I guess it doesn't work. So ultimately you get this guy and his cable and his associated app. He is currently listed for $79 on the website. Of course, pricing may change over time. Do I think that's a decent deal? Mm. It depends on what you want, but it's probably not what you want. So if you're a sysadmin and the ability to look at a computer on a tablet is really important to you, then they have an iPad and an Android tablet app, and it would not be a terrible experience. If you're pretty much anyone else, I would not bother with this thing. If you have a laptop you want to use as a KVM, I did a review of a completely different device called the Open Interface, which was only $10 more than this for the unit itself, um, more for the cables and stuff. But that one's in pre-order now, and I loved that thing. If you're into the network, in theory, this has the ability to work over Wi-Fi, which would be great, except it didn't want to connect for me. I don't know why. Um, so if you want to do something over the network, something based on Pi KVM was probably going to be a good solution. I reviewed the PiCast before, but any of the PiKVM based solutions will work fine over the network. There's nothing wrong with this hardware. The hardware is perfectly fine. It's capable of sending 1080p video. It's capable of emulating HID, all the stuff you expect from a KVM. The only hardware issue I note is that because it's powered by its HID cable, that makes it quite hard to get into the BIOS because as soon as this thing starts to boot up, this thing's also starting to boot up because it doesn't have a separate power source. And yeah, that means you won't have a great time trying to get in the BIOS. But other than that, the hardware I think is perfectly fine. The app is honestly quite awful. The Mac OS app is like a complete joke. Um, the iOS app looked like it should have had all the features it needed, but some of them just didn't work. So uh, there's that. I didn't test the Android or the Windows version or the Linux version. Those are all out there, but it seems like you should be able to get a consistent experience across Windows and Linux and Mac OS. It's not that hard, especially for a network-based product. Like you're not doing any system level APIs or anything to do this. So hopefully these guys can get their software in order because they have a pretty nice looking piece of hardware if they had the software to back it up. So that's my opinion. So I have links down below to this product um, if you're interested, I guess. I also have links to two more review videos of other products I reviewed in the past that I liked better for this sort of thing. Um, if you want to chat with me, I have a Discord server linked down below for that as well. And I'll see you guys on the next adventure.